clarifying our chair board for giving us all the, the opportunity to share with you some of our studio practices and um, it's a really great idea and I'm so glad to be here so uh, please feel free to ask questions by typing them into the chat and Jean Petrovsky is here doing the film work <laughs> and she'll be able to let me know what you're what you're asking so uh, I'll give you the quick tour of the studio I have several rooms for the studio and each one is, is a different um, purpose so this is the one where I do oil painting and um, I have recently gotten into some very large paintings and as you can see it's not the largest room however it actually works just fine for, for making large pieces and one of the ways that I make the pieces work is I either lay them on the floor or I lay them out horizontally and um, then at, from the first stages of the work and then later I get them up on the wall and I'm able to get different effects and um, it goes the painting moves to a different stage so for this painting this is a work in progress that I started earlier this year and I'm still you know moving through it it the working title is Mother's Day I started it in late May and you can see some of the effects that I've kept in the painting that I developed in this uh, earlier um, the earlier stage that I'm going to be showing you that I'm going to be showing you today so this is you know just you could see sort of the evolution of a painting and so I'm going to start here with this six by six foot canvas well it's actually a board covered in canvas and give you an idea of how almost everything that I do begins and it begins with a very loose process of multiple colors I don't tend to regulate them at all in the early stages it just uh, creates a kind of a freedom feeling for me that feeds my imagination so so well and to sort of like fortify me for the painting ahead I guess is what you say so uh, what I do is I tend to create uh, three color families uh, working on these um, old-fashioned cafeteria trays and I roll on the colors with I roll on the colors excuse me I don't know if I'm talking loud enough hopefully um, it's able to hear it if I'm talking Am I talking loud enough yet? Are you sure? No? Okay. Um, they keep saying louder, please. Okay. I, I roll on the paint with rollers. And they're the kind of rollers that you would use in printmaking. So I created this sort of case with the color. And that's done by adding a medium of... Um, it's a cold wax medium which is like a it is actually like paste but it is translucent and it makes the paint more translucent when you add it and I add a tremendous amount so I add up to 50 percent cold wax to the paint colors so you can't see it right away the translucency but you will be able to see it as I move through the layers of the painting so um, if what I do is I, I just sort of start getting it on there now a lot of the paint that you see that's already on the canvas is has been added through other through the making of other paintings so anytime I have a color that I've over mixed or if I have a color that is um, just wrong and I like it but it's not right for a particular painting I'll just add it to whatever canvas I have in the room that I'm not directly working on at that time so that's how this painting has taken on most of the color you see here so it's completely unregulated there's no plan and that what that allows is 
all these really fun things to happen that I, because I'm not thinking, it's like a psychological trick, like because I'm not thinking of this as something that I'm working towards finish on, I simply do whatever I want. And so I end up with all kinds of, you call them happy accidents, but they're not really accidents. They're just areas that I kind of love and, and techniques that I see that I would not have thought of uh, if I had been thinking of this as, as if I were trying to move on a sort of linear path from start to finish. So some of these uh, paint, paint colors and additions are, uh, they're lateral moves. A lot of this will, will actually be painted out. So are you using oils or acrylics? This is all oil painting in, in, this, um, in this painting. I, sometimes what I, what I do is I begin a canvas or a board by collaging something on it. I usually don't cover the whole thing with collage. I just, again, take pieces and I put them randomly around the board. And in this case, it has this large canvas here that I'm working on has one uh, collage piece on it because that, that day I just happened to have one with me so I just put it on there and then I just begin working over that so sometimes those collage pieces get completely covered and sometimes the collage pieces come through I really don't know at this stage and also you may not see any of these colors in the finished uh, painting either so that's all this is really about getting me excited about painting and there are parts of it that i will love um and there are parts of it that i will not be able to keep even though i do love them so it's also very tricky and challenging for me not to fall in love with what i see so i I, because I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed, <laughs> I'm not allowed to fall in love with something that I then want to protect. It's really important to me that I um, am free to continue to view the painting as a whole and not as parts that, you know, I've grown attached to. And there are always parts that I've grown attached to and it's very hard to just cover them over but oh well we have a question okay is that actually canvas or wood panel this is canvas on wood panel so it's canvas glued down to a, a, a wood can a wood panel and then um, braced in the back so i lay on these colors and jean if you have questions please just let me know mm -hmm. as we go. Um, so what I'm doing now, this um, this process of covering up areas that are already painted, I'm doing that because I'm going to be eating through those with a solvent. So that's part of the layering process that I do that starts to build a really interesting background for whatever comes on top of it. So I, it's usually two or three layers of colors that are somewhat opposed to one another. So for instance, this is sort of a very warm red and it's going over this blue. And that's because I'll be eating through the red in a few minutes and that will reveal the blue and they will vi vibrate together. So again i'm laying on the color in sort of a thoughtless way but already my mind is moving towards some kind of method and it's just you know it's just impossible to avoid and i wouldn't want to avoid it but i do have to start out feeling completely free of methods so that as i grow into the methods that i use i don't feel trapped by them question are your paints pre-mixed uh, I'm not quite sure what that means. Do, do I mix them before this session of painting, or does it does it mean do I 
buy them pre-mixed in the tube or colors? I'm not sure what that. I'll yeah. try to answer both. Okay. Sharon, <laughs> I, okay. Sharon, okay. if you, if you um, clarify your question, we'll we'll do it again. I, I use um, an array of paints. I have them laid out here. I use a lot of gambling colors, but really if people donate paints to me, I have walnut oil paints here, linseed oil paints. I mean, I'll use, I'll use any paint that I think I can use the color of. So, yeah. Um, so I'm, um, Right now, I'm going to stop for a minute, and me. we'll just look at this beautiful painting that she has, and all these incredible brush marks that are happening already. And our battery is going low, so I'm going to be tethered a little bit more. And okay, so. Sharon, do you mix all your colors first? With the no, it's not possible because I don't know what they all are yet. So I, what I do is I mix. I'll show. I'll show for Sharon. I mix three trays for color families. So this tray had was red, and now I can add other colors to that so that this red can take on can go any direction. I also have pre-mixed a tray for yellow, the yellow family. So that's what this little pile of yellow is. And then I also have a blue one. And to try to keep the families related, I mix a little bit of each color in every other color. So each blue has the yellow and red, each red has the blue and yellow. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> so. Um, so that's how the, they start out, and then they quickly start to stray into all the other colors. So there will be many more colors that I have not yet mixed. These are just the basic basics. And we um, had one more question okay. about um, why do you have canvas over the panel? Oh, for this one, this is just total happenstance because this was a gift. This, was, this just happens to be a canvas that I got from somebody who had already done that. Uh, I understand that um, painting first on canvas and then stretching that over a board is a pretty good way to travel with a painting. Like for instance, if, you're gonna, if you are in California at a studio and you make your painting there, it's a lot easier to ship back a roll of canvas than it is to ship back uh, a giant board. So that may be what happened with this artist. Just don't really know. Okay. So, so not looking a gift horse in the mouth, right? Or something that, like that? that. Um, I see your- Especially this side. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, I see you have really strong, but very comforting palette in your work. Tell us about the colors you use or, or why you get? Why are you connected with this, these, this palette? This palette. Uh, well, this this is the early palette of this painting, but I think I guess you're right. My paint, my colors do tend to be strong, um, sort of jewel tones and the primaries in a sense. Uh, it, I guess, contrast interests me and. I guess non-subtlety <laughs> interests me in, in my work, so I just find myself, in one sense, just naturally drawn to a certain palette, and I guess almost any artist would tell you there's a place, a comfort zone for their palette, uh, that they just, you know, feel um, that comes naturally to them. And then in another sense, I, I just love vibrant color. I just, I always have. So that's part of it. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've taken this squeegee. Well, this is a, actually, it's, it's not a squeegee. 
Oh, this is not a squeegee, but it acts like a squeegee. Uh, this is by Catalyst, and there are these rubber forms, and you can drag the paint and smooth it. So it makes it like a film across your board or canvas. This is another reason why I use board, and in this case, you know, canvas covered board, but still a stiff surface rather than canvas, because you can do so much with moving paint around uh, in a way where you, you just wouldn't be able to do it if there was a balance to it, like a, or, or even a rough texture. Um, so this is, I believe this is linen covered, the linen canvas. So you, maybe you can see the sheen on that, Jean. I don't know with the cam camera if you could see that the act of doing this has created like a very near, almost a mirror surface for that area, which is, which is nice because that's the preparation for using the solvent to sort of eat away at that layer or at the layers and let's get a bigger brush in here and I'll show you what that looks like so do some it feels a little like calligraphy but of course it isn't it's not anywhere near as sophisticated and trained as calligraphic work. It's very lovely. <laughs> okay, so we have two questions. Okay. Um, what size is this? Do you know what size this panel is? The board is six by six feet. Yeah. So okay, and okay. here's one. Your clothes look clean. You never mess or do you normally wear painting clothes? <laughs> <laughs> they can't see it, but this skirt is covered. This is my official <laughs> painting skirt, um, and it is covered with all kinds of stuff. But I do usually wear, um, uh, you know, like a bib apron, and I just didn't today. So, okay. So I'm going to go over this, and you're going to see, Jean, if you could sort of in on that. You see how what happens when the solvents uh, sit for a little while on the surface where there's something underneath of it and then I just use the solvents to eat through that. So the calligraphy that you put down is now showing through. Exactly. And depending on how long I leave these solvents on then I will get more or less eating through. And I can do this at any stage. I can do it um, when I have six layers on, two layers on. But what's important is, you know, how, how dry what is underneath is. So the under layer has to be a little drier than the over layer in order for, obviously, it, not all to come off at once. But this is one of the ways that I start building the richness of the surface. Which solvent do you use? I use Gamsol, and I end up with a lot of very solvent-rich uh, paint because I'm pulling it away, and it's you know it's all this it creates all this um, very liquidy paint wash. And I just go ahead and continue to spread that around. In fact, I can spread it, and then I can eat through that if I want with the solvent. But the other nice thing about collaging first is, so you'll notice here, even though there's only one collage on this, but still, um, as you drag paint over the collage, it creates these nice little areas where the paint like catches up against the edges, and it just is, it's very um, visually, it can be very visually intriguing. So, and then if I put on thick paint earlier, where I have a lot of brush stroke, and that is dried, then as I drag the solvent paint over that, it catches in those, so it's like an aging technique almost. Um, 
So this service is really starting to look interesting to me. Um, I'm going to lay on another color. And then I can show you just a few of the characters that I've developed. Uh, I have some in different stages, and I thought I'd show you those and see if there's any questions about them. So, so this is the uh, this is the yellow that I did mix up earlier, and um, to Sharon's point, I won't really get as far as continuing to mix new colors today. That's, it's a little bit of a process and sort of a little bit of dead air. So not the best thing to do in a, in a quick demo like this, but we can always talk about it later. So I'm doing this sort of very, here you can see how the translucency works with the um, cold wax medium addition to the paint. I'm rolling over this color and you're really looking right through it into the orange behind it. Eventually, I will be unifying the colors on here so that I really have a painting that reads with one primary color as being the strongest color. Hmm. So it will not stay this patchwork of everything. Uh, that it's just my style. I, uh, I think I used to use a lot more color and I have uh, turned that toward using a lot of color at the beginning and then slowly bringing those toward one color family as it moves towards towards the end of the painting. Sort of like this painting is essentially yellow and, and it's going to remain essentially yellow through, um, through the finishing. And so I've been using, uh, lately I've been using one very vibrant color and then neutrals along with that, a collection of neutrals, browns, whites, grays, and uh, it's just something, I don't know, it's just appealed to me lately. So I want to show you a couple paintings that are in process. This is not an oil painting. This is, a, this is an acrylic painting over collage. And it's going actually now to move, move on into being painted with oil paint. So that's another thing that I do frequently. I start a painting with um, collage, as I said, and then I'll often do the initial painting in acrylics. Acrylics are very fast. You can move so quickly and you can move over, over colors extremely quickly, especially in the heat of a summer studio. And and then when I get to a certain point, I just want to move to oil. And I love oil because it has this richness that is um, just kind of indescribable. And it, and it works more slowly. You, you definitely work more slowly with it because of its drying time, even if you use dryers. Or in my case, I don't use dryers, but I use a white that is in almost all my colors, and that white is an alkyd. So that helps all of my colors to dry more quickly. So this is on its way to um, continuing in oil. This is um, sort of an odd character that is a bird, person, child, girl, something. And I love making characters that don't exist. I don't have necessarily like a repertoire of characters that I go to, but sometimes I do see similar characters emerge. I tend to make uh, the characters either like an animal or a bird character that has human characteristics, 
or a human who has animal characteristics? Okay, there were uh, questions that got hidden, so I want to ask them. Okay. Do you ever move to brushes? Yes. Okay. Yes, that will be. On this larger piece, that will be, I'll probably do two or three more layers before I move to brushes. This is a piece where you can see a little bit of the progress where I've, I started with a background that was very complicated and I started to mask out this figure out of that background which was multiple layers. You can still see some of the collage up in here and all of this masking is brushwork and once I get to that stage where an, an animal per, or person starts to emerge, it's really all brushes from there on out. And, and it's every size brush. So sometimes there are parts of them that, that have extreme detail. And I also have to have the, you know, the broader brushes for the loose, loose parts. So that's, that's one that's, an oil, that's full on oil. Um, here's a couple that are, I'll bring them up so you can see them. This is another... Wait, can I go back to yeah. your characters? Yeah. So they're not from your childhood or from their current... I mean, do, or do they have some history at all from... I hope not things that you saw, maybe, but um, you, you do have a, a vivid imagination. Um, are they really current or did they come from childhood? Only in that... Uh, I've always been a, an animal connected person and all the animals that I've ever, you know, been acquainted with have had just as much personality as the people that I've known. So I don't, I guess the only thing that is a continuous um, like response to fi the figure from childhood is that I try not to make a distinction whether something is is human is a human animal or an, an another type of animal. I think of it all as animal and animal behavior. So, um, so that's why I just try not to have a line really between what is human and what is animal, and that just comes out in the work. Is that you were getting a lot of praise on that one. I love the facial expression. Oh, great. But I, 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 before I lose the question, okay. it was about the collage mm -hmm. part. Does the solvent loosen the collage? No, no. The collage is, is put on with acrylic mediums, and I put a few layers over the collage of the medium. So it, because the, a collage clear medium is essentially plastic, the solvent is, is meeting it, but I don't leave the solvent on long enough for it to eat through it. I mean, maybe if I left it on there for days, it would, but it's on for seconds or minutes and it doesn't disturb it. Okay. Can you work with photos? Um, I'm not sure. Do you mean, can I re reproduce photos or? Amy, if you can clarify your question, we'll redo it. Uh, or photos as collage. I have worked, I'll, I'll answer what I think is meant, uh, I've worked with photos that are like vintage photos that I find at flea markets or something like that, and then I copy them. In fact, most of my collage that goes on first, you know, right on the, on the uh, raw board after the gesso, those are all copied. So I go through my sketchbooks find interesting something that I, you know, like, <laughs> and then I take it to Staples and I get it copied. And I like Staples, they have these very sophisticated copiers. I can blow it up or reduce it so I can really change my, uh, my, my original drawing. And I can preserve the original sketchbook drawing that way as well, and then still use the piece in the on the canvas or board so and amy clarified it she said use photographs as part of the collage so i think and i never use straight up photos okay. not pho photos it, they'd have to be copied okay that's the, 
and I do sometimes, but I, it, it has to be like a, either somebody who we know is long dead or somebody who is, you know, like from the 30s or something, well, sometimes not be, but turn of the century, we'll say, and, um, or something that just, I alter in some way so you can't tell who it is. It's important to me that the faces are completely obscured in the end. Does that make sense? Okay. And then I guess, let's see. There's this one where, this one shows some of the solvent. Oh, oh, oh. you'll get to hear. Oh, that, look, that sounds like a Shotzi bark. There's my. Um, well, her love of animals is very present. <laughs> so someone just walked by, apparently. Um, so this shows some of the solvent work that is, it makes it really easy to see. So see, I'm still, oh sorry, I'm still using it up in here where you, where you see all this uh, um, modeled area and it looks kind of bubbly. And that's because I can continue to paint layer after layer after layer and use that technique of the solvents. And it can be actually very controlled at times. It, I use it really freely in the beginning, but towards the end of a painting, I, I'll control it. Um, I tend to work like a funnel. I start extremely wide with every possibility, and then I start to narrow. And if I get too narrow, it's gets a little crazy and I have to open it back up again. So there's some characters in there. This is my, this is called um, In the Garden of Webbed Feet Between Us. It's that chicken thing. It's that chicken. Yeah, there's little chickens. Yeah. And now I have chickens living next door, probably illegally. <laughs> I'm telling you what. I won't say a thing. All right. Okay. So, Jean, there's one over here that is actually pretty easy to. I bet you have got some capital now with that battery. Okay, we're off the cord. A lot of people mentioned um, storytelling in my work, and you know, obviously it's very it's very narrative. And this is another in progress. This this probably won't end up looking much like this, except for this character, who I I think I'll keep him, and maybe some version of this character but but the paintings remain very open-ended until they start to close down and by close down I mean move towards finish so do you use any kind of sealant at the end yes I use a, a I again it's a it's a gambling product I use um, gam var and I, I it, they I feel they really have to be sealed I feel that's best and I'm going to focus in on her oh. skirt. Okay. On her skirt. Oh, where the. Oh, can you. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's true. It, it's a working skirt. <laughs> and this is the one where I was thinking there's a lot of solvent work in that one. But also, um, there's some narrative elements as well. It's 5.34. Oh, here's a good question. Um, such a strong style. Love your work. Notice you're doing a lot of chairs lately. Is there a story behind that? Oh, yes. I 
Well, the story, it's not, the story itself isn't, maybe you wouldn't think of it as a story, but I have, I have this affinity for chairs. I have always been drawn to chairs and I see them as an invitation for reflection. So that combined with the many, many types of chairs that there are and how those chairs reflect a particular age, a particular um, political climate. I mean, they're almost like proxy people. So chairs really interest me and I am planning on doing a whole chair theme for an upcoming show called 25 Days of Minis that's coming up in the month of December. And, and leading up to that, I've been showing more chairs and as I said, they're, I just think they're fascinating. Have you always worked with such many layers like this? And I know you did ceramics too, so how do ceramics influence your painting and when did that all go? sideways? Well, the cer surfaces is what I became interested in, in in ceramics. And like many ceramicists, I just became interested in glazes and building up um, depth of surface. And I, I thought for many years that I wouldn't be able to find a technique that offered the kind of richness that glazes offered uh, on, on surfaces. And I found this technique that I feel really opened me up to the idea that that could happen. I mean, glazes, glaze on clay is, you know, it's its own brilliance. It's just a wonderful thing and no, there's nothing like it. And I finally accepted that. <laughs> but um, I was ready to move on to um, just some different mediums and just some more exploration outside of clay. So I found a way to get the surfaces, you know, the rich surfaces that I fell in love with with clay. So I, I do feel that, you know, my history as a clay person and as a glaze maker, um, you know, informs this work. Here's another question. Okay. There's a C more to it, so I'll see if I can do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, you mentioned a specific white which one and wondering how much you'll work on that layer before you wait till it for it to I can't I'm sorry and right. I can't open oh wait wait okay. for okay I'm going to start over you mentioned the specific white which one okay the white that I use is this it's a griffin alkyd and it's titanium what so brand is it? This is oh. a Winsor Newton. And it again, I, I use, you know, I use whatever paints work for what I need. And for a white, this is perfectly adequate. When it goes, when I need certain colors, I need a lot of pigment. So I, I will use a more expensive paint for color. And, but this is very adequate for, for white. And I add this to almost everything. So it, it speeds up the drying for all my colors. And the second part of her question is, and wondering how much you'll work on that layer before you'll wait for it to dry. Oh, well, that is an open-ended, I'll have to wait um, after, like after this session, the, um, you know, after this, this uh, live Facebook live event um, because there's so much solvent based paint which you can see if Jean if you could mm -hmm. see the see the deep red there the splatters like those are completely wet and they're not going to be dry till probably tomorrow so if I want to keep them and I do um, I'll have to wait till tomorrow now I still have some more I would like to do a couple more solvent areas on this layer before I stop today. So, 
this, and I, so I just did this very yellow layer, and I want to get in some different, um, you know, types of marks. So all, all of the marks that I use are not just, you know, free flowing. Sometimes I use um, like grid, a grid type, like a checkerboard. Sometimes I use what looks like writing. And it may or may not be writing, but it's something that just the appearance of it being writing just it refers to something that is literal. And I like that thinking. We have five minutes. Okay. So, so this gets all gummy. Oh well. <gasps> Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's so there beautiful. I put this darkness underneath. So this is part of this oh. process is that I'll, I'll there if I had tried to plan that, just would not have happened as magically. And so what I'll do is I'll allow um, I'll just allow some of these things to show me interesting things and oftentimes it's coding the areas that are the most that just look the least interesting that can become the most interesting so if look if you look over here i don't know if you can see that see how the yellow underneath is just a slightly darker yellow or slightly mm -hmm. more rich yellow and then you get to see this you only see this writing area because the yellow on top of that had a teensy bit more white in it. And so that is obviously a subtle area, whereas here you have the strength of this darkness coming through. And here you have this gray uh, that was underneath uh, this, you know, this very pale and translucent yellow making a very subtle stripe area. So what will happen next with this is when I may do one or two, maybe two more layers, then it'll go up on the wall. Because the truth is, I can't really see it here. And you know, it looks like a big trapezoid to me right now. And that's great for this process, because it, if I can't see it, I can't think too much. So, but I, of course, want to be able to start seeing what I'm going to be doing overall with it. And so I need to get it up on the wall. I'll get this one down. This is the only area in here that fits a painting of this size. So, um, so it'll go up on there. And, and I'll probably just work on something else for a few days till I start to see in here something. Something will emerge that I'll, I'll, I will start getting connected to a character here. And, um, and then we'll move from there. Okay, so um, thank you so much for, for visiting me here. I'm so glad that you asked questions and I hope you um, enjoyed yourselves as much as I did. And again, thank you to the Rittenhouse Board. Uh, five o'clock club is every Thursday at five. Um, not exactly sure who the next person is, but it is next Thursday. And um, so enjoy, enjoy the five o'clock club and your evening. Thank you. <laughs>